not read a textbook. Hello. Anji. अकॉर्डिंग टू आवर प्रीवियस एक्सपीरियंसिस when an in in person meeting was done at least 60 to 70% of the persons delegate did not know this and they did not know in which cardex till the wall opens and then the whole of the basal no the blood from the upper upper extremities comes to the superior vena cava and from the lower extremities by the inferior vena cava and they go to the right atrium from the right atrium to go to the right ventricle now remember the atrioventricular walls that mean the mitral and tricuspid wall they open in diastole and close in systole remember this basic thing and because many person don't know this and then we send them immediately back so from the right this is all venous blood the blue is all venous blood so from the right atrium it goes to the tricuspid through the tricuspid wall into the right ventricle and from the right ventricle it goes through the pulmonary wall into the pulmonary artery as you know so so remember this thing so this atrioventricular walls open in diastole close in systole while the ventricular arterial wall ventricular arterial walls means that from the ventricle to the artery they open in systole and close in diastole just opposite that and from the pulmonary artery they go to the lungs from the lungs they are oxygenated and they come through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium now see this is the red blood now and that means it has been oxygenated and it goes from the left atrium to the left ventricle now this is a again an atrioventricular wall atrioventricular means atrium and ventricle atrium and ventricle this is now the atrioventricular wall and these atrioventricular walls hello ha ah. ye hamari ek lecture chal raha hai baad mein aadhe ghante baad nahi kar sakte ho mere ek lecture chal raha hai zara sa ek ghante baad nahi kara sakte hain aap so so from the left atrium it go to the left ventricle and from the left ventricle go to the aorta into the into the through its aortic wall so the main point is that the atrio ventricular walls that is between the atrium and the ventricle they open in diastole and close in systole because the ventricles have to fill up and the ventricular arterial wall that is the pulmonary artery pulmonary wall and an aortic wall they open in systole and close in diastole so remember these basic uh, basic hemodynamics and regarding the walls where they are located and when where do they open or so now when we talk of systole and diastole basically it refers to the ventricles every in fact every chamber undergoes systole and diastole in diastole every chamber is filled up in systole every chamber empties itself but unless specified whenever we say systole and diastole is members to the ventricle or what atria also get a that it is systole and diastole or so so but normally when we blouse specifying when we say it indicate the a, ventricle or so then pre load and after load pre means before after means after means the later on so pre load means the 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 amount of blood which is present before entering the the ventricle which is known as an end diastolic flow volume end diastolic means when the uh, as long as it's filled up and then after load is as the name indicates the load which is which is you fear afterward for example suppose you i'll inform me done or so so remember 
pre-load is before the ventricle, it is the filling of the ventricle. After load is, is emptying the vessel. And we'll explain to you the pressure and volume or load and frequency. Remember, we will not bring any physics slide because till now, in last 50 years, I will never understood the physics of Doppler. So we'll only keep one slide of this and that's all. Say now, what is the pressure overload? Now remember one thing, before seeing the slide, suppose you are pushing a man of 50 kg, you require certain load. Suppose you are pushing a man of 90 kg, your load increases because that is after load and you have to apply more force. So there will be the difference between 50 kg and 90 kg and that is known as an after load, a 50 kg and a 90 kg, you more require this. So this is a state of cardiac muscle which has to contact against an increased after load. That means the late, for example, in left ventricle, it is like aortic stenosis and hypertension. In, hyper, in aortic stenosis, the aortic valve is narrowed. So the left ventricle has to put a lot of pressure and to push it, to push the blood growth after load is increased. And right ventricle is again a pulmonary stenosis pulmonary hypertension, these are all conditions of, so LV like an aortic stenosis, hypersystemic hypertension, and RV like a volume. So this is after load. That with the load on the ventricle, which, which in which it has to uh, pump the blood outside. And as the, as the name indicates, a volume overload when the ventricle has got an increased volume. For example, <clears throat> you take an aortic regurgitation. In aortic regurgitation, the left ventricle is filled from the aorta by a regurgitant volume. The, 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 in aortic regurgitation, the blood goes into the, from the aorta into the left ventricle. And left ventricle is also receiving a blood from the left atrium. So that we now the left ventricle is getting a blood from two sources. So that is an increase in the volume that is known as a volume overload. The same happens to, for example, mitral regurgitation. Again, two, from two places, the ventricle is giving a blood. So that is known as a volume overload, like an aortic regurgitation, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation. So volume in a volume overload, because the chamber is filled from two sources, the increased volume is there, so chamber increases in size. In a pressure overload, because there is more pressure on the contraction, it is more, uh, more marked by a ventricular hypertrophy. Don't get confused today. They will be again be told to you repeatedly. Now, this is the only slide I have brought for the, for the, uh, from the physics. See, the sound travels in a in the in the form of a wave. Now, and that is known as a cycle. One cycle is one wave. And you know, here you see in one second, one, two, three, four, five. One wave is equal to one hertz. You must have heard the hertz yesterday. And many of them have finished their course never knowing what is hertz. So the number of cycles which are which occur in one cycle is known as hertz. For example, here you see one, two, three, four, five cycles occur in a second, so it is five hertz. Here, ten cycles occur in a cycle, in a cycle, so it is a ten hertz. So when you hear there is a two point five megahertz transducer, that means it is it is transmitting two point five million cycles per second. A five megahertz transducer, five million cycles. Keeping in mind that one cycle is equal to one hertz. So number of cycles means the number of hertz. An ultrasound is a special type of ultrasound, which is, which is not audible by, by the human ear, and usually it is more than 20 hertz or 20 cycles or so. Now, that is the only thing we have heard about physics. Now, unfortunately, don't feel it bad, but these are all based upon the previous batches. They don't know what is systole, they don't know what is diastole or so. So this is a this is a very important thing and never so. So those of who you are who are doing an echo and you are well expert, they should not mind it because it is mainly not meant for them, but it is meant for the majority. 
Now remember, if this is an ECG, this is P wave, this is QRS complex. The portion from the QRS complex to the end of the T wave is known as diastole. So this is, sorry, this is systole. And from the end of T wave to the QRS complex, it is known as diastole. So the systole is from the QRS complex to the T wave, and after the T wave is the diastole start, and P wave is the HL contraction. So this is known as a systole and diastole, and you should know, and this will help you in your echo studies, even sometimes when you don't have the facility of an ECG. For example, here you see, now from the QRS, from the QRS to the T wave is systole, and from the T wave to the QRS, it diastole. So this is systole, this is diastole. Again, same thing. From the QRS to the T wave is systole. And from here to the QRS one is diastole. And this is the P wave, which is HL contraction. Now, what is now suppose how do you happen in acid echo? Now, many of these images you will not understand till today because but unless you get used to it. Now, this is a mitral wall. As I told you, now. As I told you, mitral wall opens in diastole, closes in systole. Now here you see, the diastole starts after the QR, after the T wave. And you see, this is diastole. It starts opening in diastole, mitral wall. And you see, there it closes, and it closes at the systole. So even without this, you can say which is diastole, which is systole. This is anterior leaflet. This is posterior leaflet. It's open in diastole, and they meet together and close in systole. And you see this close the systole is it goes on for QRS to the end of the T wave. So this is known as ECG plus echo, systole, and diastole. Similarly, you see this is the this is the RV. You see, this is whatever you see on a 2D echo, the same thing you see on a my on a on a M mode echo. This is right ventricle, this is right ventricle. This is interventricular septum, this is interventricular septum. This is left ventricle, this is left ventricle. This is the posterior wall, this is the posterior wall. This is the strongest echo is always the pericardium, and see, this is the pericardium. Now the ventricle contracts in diastole and in systole and relaxes in diastole. So you see, this is systole. Now you see they are contracting in systole and starts from here, from the T wave, from the QRS and goes up to the end of the T wave. And here the diastole starts because everything has to be diastole and systole. So you can see how they combine with it. So everything can be correlated with ECG. And keeping in mind that QRS to T wave is systole and beyond the T wave is diastole. So now coming to the echocardiography, there are three important things a clinical information anatomic information and hemodynamic information. Clinical information, I told you, is extremely important. Take, don't, it take, it will not take more than one minute. Take a history of, brief history. Sir, so, sir, so, 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 stop it, stop it. Stop it, stop it. Stop it, stop Please pause yourself. Otherwise, you can go back to your room. So, so with this clinical information is important. It doesn't take more than one minute. Oscar, suppose a patient comes to you and suppose he tells you this on exertion. That gives you an information that why the patient is distant. Suppose the patient complains of palpitation, you should know why is he distant. Suppose you have edema fees. So this thing, a brief clinical information followed by EC and X-ray and an auscultation. As in the later part of the course, we will tell you the importance of auscultation. Anatomic information is obtained by 2D echo, very important. So the anato all the 2D echo, what is the size of the ventricles? What is the thickness of the ventricles? How are the walls openings? So all anatomical information is provided by the 2D echo, which is very important. And all hemodynamic, hemo means blood and the pattern of movement all hemodynamic information is provided by the Doppler. So all three are interlinked or so. You cannot only one can all. So you have to do a good 2D echo, all views, and then have a good hemodynamic information. So
so the hemodynamics is a doppler based technique it is a doppler based technique is around the it is important now what information does doppler given what does it record because we are discussing doppler what information does it give now you need doppler records velocities now every the blood flows with a certain velocity in the system if there is no velocity the blood will not flow that means the patient dead so whether it is a chamber or whether it is a blood vessel their blood has to flow with a velocity and in certain direction that that i'll tell you just now so this velocity is converted into hemodynamics so that means you have to take a good velocity so that is the doppler records the velocities and this velocity is converted into a hemodynamics how you see this say so that is known by the modified equation velocity is converted into gradients gradients means a difference of pressure between the two chambers for example suppose there is a mitral stenosis the mitral wall is between the left atrium and the left ventricle so when the left atrium has to push the blood through a narrow orifice it increases its pressure because it has to increase its pressure to push the blood through a narrow orifice so this difference of pressure between la and lv is known as a gradient similarly you take aortic stenosis when the aortic valve is narrowed the main strain is on is on left ventricle so left ventricle it pushes the blood with an increased pressure into the aorta so this difference of pressure between the left ventricle and the aorta is known as the gradient so in a rough language remember a, a gradient is a difference of pressure between the two chambers so at great and it is calculated by 4 into velocity square now it is not very difficult but later on it will be easy for you see suppose you have recorded a velocity at 3 meters per second now according to this formula 3 4 into velocity square become 36 4 into 9 become 36 so that your aim is to get a good velocity and that is the gradient is 4 into velocity square everywhere that is automatically calculated by the machine your role is to get a good velocity if you if your velocity is wrong your calculations are wrong for example i we don't going to detail suppose this is tr jet now the tr jet velocity is 5.54 you see automatically by the modified equation it comes into 21 22 so 4 into velocity square is 122 so you do you you record a good velocity measure it and the machine automatically give you the gradient so you see here it is already gradient you have recorded the velocity and 4 into velocity square again 4 into velocity square and here 4 into velocity square gives you the gradient or a pressure so remember this thing now this is the only another slide of a doppler now what is doppler shift now a doppler always travels in a wave as i told you travels in a with a certain frequency or a wave so when it is traveling it is it a certain frequency and it comes back with a different frequency that forward and different frequency is known as a doppler shift but to forget about it you will you will need, don't, don't you will not it will tell you why now there is therefore a doppler shift that is when there is a shift there should be three things source receiver and they must be moving towards each other now remember this what i am telling you the traditional example given every textbook is a you are standing on a railway station and a whistling train is coming towards you now the sound source is the whistle of the engine the the receiver is your human ear so so now so they because because the because it is moving towards you you hear a loud sound and as soon as the train passes off the platform and it goes away from you the same strength of the sound becomes less because it is going again so sector requirement is they should be moving to one another now suppose you are traveling on a you are sit is standing on a railway platform there is a stationary train the stationary train is gives you a is gives a whistling sound it will remain the same 
because they because neither is sound source is moving towards the receiver nor from the receiver is moving towards it so you have seen or many it's a daily experience that when your trail with the, when the train is not moving and it is whistling it is it is giving the same speed so there are three things required a sound source receiver and they should be moving towards each other to see the various velocities or so so this is there are three things now in a clinical echocardiography is sound source is the transducer so this transducer becomes the train the target of the receiver is the tube is the red blood cells because you see the red blood cells are constantly moving into the into the into the body so when the when the ultrasound waves or the transducer waves strike the rvc they produce some sort of a velocity or so and what is the i remember it will explain it to you just now when the blood is going towards this transducer the the shifting is above the baseline uh, i will just think this and i'll tell you again when the blow is towards the transducer and indicative and it's away from the transducer away from the transducer so you see so again transducer is the sound source target is the red blood cells and the magnitude the velocity forget about it and the doppler shift when the flow is moving towards the transducer it is above the baseline hence it is positive and when it is moving away from the transducer it is negative now to explain is further so that you can understand now which is the, the principle now you remember one thing i keep my left ventricle on the left side and right ventricle on the right side like a myo clinic people do see this is now the apical four chamber view this is left ventricle this is right ventricle this is the left atrium this is the right atrium and this is the mitral valve now remember one basic thing whichever view you take whether it is an apical view parasternal long axis view short axis view subcortical view the transducer is always pointing from above downwards that is the remember two thing you have to remember the transducer is always pointing from above above downwards in any view so this is apex the transducer is pointing from above downwards like this so now what is happening the blood from this is the pulmonary vein the blood from the left atrium through the mitral valve goes into the left ventricle now see the blood is going towards the transducer because the transducer is point, pointing away from the transducer hence the doppler signal will be above the baseline so now you see this is the opening in diastole and closing in systole so you see because the transducer is pointing from above downward and the blood is going towards the transducer it will be shown as above the baseline and whenever the flow goes away from the transducer it will be below the baseline so that is the positive or a negative of the shift so you see this is the mitral wall this is the left atrium this is left ventricle now see the transducer is pointing downward and you see this doppler is is showing above the baseline that is this is known as a positive doppler shift positive because it is going towards the transducer it should be very clear now so so again i will tell you because the blood is going from the la to lv and towards the transducer which is pointing above downward it is above the baseline now you see this is the left ventricle this is the aorta this is the left atrium and this is the mitral wall now the blood from the lv after all blood has to go out it is not that it is going only in so when the blood goes out it is going away from the transducer into the aortic wall so hence it will be negative shift because the blood is going away from the transducer so towards it it is positive shift and against it is doppler shift now you see now you see here the shift is forget about all this so actually this patient had an aortic stenosis riga did now see the because it is going away from the transducer and this is systole this is the aortic wall so it is going it is going below the baseline negative shape but then you suddenly see a one doppler signal is above the baseline in diastole you see diastole starts from here 
So the any signal which is above the baseline coming from the aorta and diastole is an aortic regurgitation. It is difficult for you now, but remember, only concern is that, that it is it is going away from the transducer. It is because it is going away from the transducer. It is a negative shape, and you see this is a negative shape, and it is again cystic because it is going away from the transducer. And because this air that is going towards the transducer is above the baseline, so remember it, and you will find it very easy subsequently. Now, what are the Doppler? So remember, transducer position, which way it is pointing, which way the blood is going, that is when we showed you the basic hemodynamics. Now, there are three types of Doppler modalities, pulse wave, continuous wave, and color flow mapping. Now, remember, it is not difficult. Hey, hey, remember one thing, this is this cut you know is known as a pulse Doppler. The pulse Doppler means that it records the velocity at a particular place where it is placed. So that suppose this is placed at the mitral wall or tricuspidal, it will record only the velocity from there, and it cannot measure high velocity flow. So remember two basic things about a pulse Doppler: it cannot it cannot measure a high velocity flow, and number two, it has got a sample volume which can only only measure from a particular place while a continuous wave doppler it is able to measure the high velocity flow it has got you see two two crystals one this side one that side and it records all high velocity flows and there is no there is no sample volume remember one thing low velocity high velocity all disease flows are high velocity flows. A sample volume, no sample volume. I'll show it diagrammatically. Now you see, now you see this is the Doppler. You see this cut. This cut is the sample volume. Wherever you put it, you put it on the mitral wall. Will you only recall the mitral wall? You put it on the tricuspid. So this cut, the size of this sample volume can be made variable. So this looks like this. Now C, C W. Now this cut has disappeared. So now what is doing is the is the is the Doppler recording velocity all the along the whole line. Again you see here the velocity is recorded only wherever this is put, and this is sort of a, a, a gap between the two the sample volumes also. And you see the velocity is only about one meter. This is one meter. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It is one meter per second, one point zero, and you see now it has disappeared, and the same one has become one, a two has become higher velocity. So this is the only thing between first and second. Well, again to make it clear, it records a low velocity flow. It records a high velocity flow. It has a sample volume which measures the flow velocity at a very specific side. And there's no sample volume. It records the velocity all along the whole line of the Doppler. One thing is aliasing. Al aliasing, there is there is something known as a, a Nyquist limit. That is, is the maximum measurable velocity by a pulse Doppler. And when the velocity exceeds this thing, exceeds, it produces above and below the baseline. We'll show you. Don't worry. And there's no aliasing. We'll show you again. You see, we have put the sample volume at the mitral wall. So we are only recording the mitral wall. See, so we are recording only the mitral wall because we have put the sample volume at the mitral wall. Now here you see, we have put the uh, uh, only CW Doppler and we are recording only at the, uh, from the whole region, but maximum at the aortic wall. So the main point is that sample volume records a velocity along the own particular structure and this record this record whole of the Doppler line. This will be more clearer when we show it a live demonstration to you. So now what is aliasing? Well, you see this is this is a this is a case of mitral regurgitation. We have now this is high velocity flow. We have purposely put a Pulse Doppler to demonstrate. 
Now, this pulse Doppler does not record a high velocity flow. So, recording a flow above and below the baseline. That means the flow is cut. It cannot cut or so. So, that is known as aliasing. Because it is because it is it is more than the alias, both at the Nikes limit. Hence, it is it shows above and below those lines, and you don't know from where to measure and where not to measure. Otherwise, in a Doppler, a, a Doppler, you see a, a whole Doppler envelope within the within this Doppler field. This whole Doppler envelope is seen here. Also, you see the whole Doppler envelope is seen, and nothing is cut. But here you see. The whole Doppler spectrum is cut, and you don't know where to start and where to do. So there are various ways to remove it. I will not tell you now this physiological means when they slightly increase. Now you take a velocity. Ask the patient to run 20 stairs. His blood velocity will increase, and he will develop a physiological aliasing. That means it is not. It is a physiological change in the velocity due to exertion or anxiety. Pathological is because of disease. There are various ways to remove this, but I don't want to confuse. There are three, four ways that will be shown to you when you are doing a, a, a live one. But most important is, now see the aliasing, a pulse Doppler above and below the baseline. Now see after CW, it has aliasing has disappeared because now it is high velocity flow. So this here, so that is when you are having a, and aliasing. Suppose it's a physiological aliasing, then what to do? Increase the velocity scale, or what you can do? Now you see, we have brought the baseline above, so did the velocity below the baseline increases, and we blow above. So, but we'll condone, we'll not down to confuse you, but only to see that whenever you get an aliasing, put a CW Doppler. Because this aliasing may be pathological also. So here you see, this is a 5.7 meters per second. And now here, the contents of the Doppler records whole of the MR jet, and there is a no aliasing. So this will be, so whenever a live demonstration is done, you always tell them to please show aliasing. And aliasing is usually found in case of pulse Doppler and never in the CW Doppler. So when, you, when do you use pulse Doppler? Now, Initially, forget about velocity across the normal walls and some normal veins of blood vessels. This, of course, will be told later on, the evaluation of diastolic. The main thing is, whenever you want to study a particular site, particular place, we always use a pulse Doppler. Suppose you want to use an hepatic and the pulmonary veins, we always use a pulse Doppler. A continuous wave Doppler is measure high velocity flows all disease flows are high velocity flows. So you can straight away put on a CW Doppler. All stenotic walls are high velocity flows. All regurgitant walls are high velocity flows. A pulmonary pressure, we get high velocity flows, prosthetic walls, and many other things. So remember, all disease flows are have a high velocity flow, and they are, should be continued with a continuous Doppler. And all normal walls and low velocity flows by a pulse Doppler. For example, you see this LVOT will be term will be used very, very frequently with you. So you know this is the left ventricle, this is the aorta, this is the LA. The, the structure between the anterior mitral leaflet and the interval septum is the LVOT. This is the left ventricle output tract. Now, this is inflow, the blood which goes into the LV. As you come out, you see the L, this is the outflow track. So this is the anterior mitral leaflet because the, the wall which is joined the, the which comes out from the aortic wall is the anterior. So the so the anterior mitral leaflet and the intervent septum, this is the LVOT. And this will be used frequently in your whole study to remember. So when because you and if you want to study the LVOT, you have to pulse Doppler, because you don't put a CW, because you want a specific a, a specific velocity across the LVOT. See, so you see this LVOT, suppose you want an LVOT velocity, it is specific velocity, and you take a pulse Doppler. So we have put a pulse Doppler, and we get it. Now you see, 
this is going away from the away from the chaduser so it is below the baseline it is below the baseline and so and then you will come to it later on again so it is so you keep it is a pulse so remember wherever you want to what is a particular structure all stopler any disease flow high velocity now some tips use pulse doppler in situation of normal flows if aliasing occurs revert to cw doppler rather than stretching everything use cw doppler in all diseased where high flow is expected place whenever you are placing a sample volume always place at the tip of the leaflets in mitral wall at the tip of the leaflets aortic wall tip of the leaflet so whenever the wall opens so whenever the wall opens the tip of the leaflet you put a sample volume like this because this is the wall opening closing so you can put a at the tip of the leaflets so the most important requirement in doppler is ye sab aapko jab live demonstration hoga to lagega to abhi to aapko difficult lag raha hai because those are not doing it now we have to be the most important thing is we have to be as parallel to the flow as possible maybe sometimes zero degree is very very difficult because you know doppler records velocities if your velocities are wrong then your all calculations become wrong so in doppler studies we use multiple windows to be as parallel to the blood pressure as possible only up to 15 to 20% deviation is required not more than that so so the there are two basic dictums this may be when as you proceed further in the course in which view or the views is this all best seen remember one basic dictum we showed you just now am i parallel to the flow if you follow these two basic dictums you can never be wrong you see or suppose you take that as say mitral wall or you see this is a parasternal long axis view transducer is pointing above downwards it is perpendicular so it is a perpendicular means you cannot you cannot study the aortic and the and the mitral wall this is the right ventricle left ventricle mitral wall aorta and trans and aortic wall and your transducer is pointing downwards so you are perpendicular so you cannot take any because your aim is to be as parallel to the flow as possible so so now what happens here now here you see you are completely parallel to the flow because you are you are perpendicular you are parallel the blood is going from la to lv and the transducer is here so you are parallel to the flow so you use mitral wall when you for the apical views or so because you are remember so number one in which view the mitral walls are seen one the apical four chamber view and then you are parallel to the flow again you see three chamber view you this lv aorta this and here you see the blood is going towards the transducer so you are parallel to the flow in majority of the cases in a mitral wall once you get a good apical four chamber and a three chamber view you can get a good doppler because you as you can see you are parallel to the flow here a tricuspid wall it may be it a tricuspid wall has to be seen from various position now what i tell you this position you will not understand today but over a period of time just remember this is the rv in flow view so this is the right ventricle this is the, this is the right atrium this is the tricuspid wall now you see here the transducer is pointing below downwards and the flow is going towards the transducer so number 1 you are parallel to the flow so you put a color here and you see this a transducer is here so you are parallel and again you see this is the rv in flow view because this is a right ventricle right atrium this is the short axis view this is the right atrium right ventricular rv outflow tract pulmonary wall pulmonary artery so now here you see the flow from the rv to rv will be going towards the transducer which is pointing above downward and you will be parallel to the flow you see this just imagine the as you go you go further in the course 
just imagine which view we are taking is it parallel to the flow keeping in mind that transducer is always pointing this way and you see this way again you see this is this is apical view this is ra to rv the flow will go from ra to rv and it is parallel to the parallel to the transducer so you get a good view and this is a four chamber the subcostal view this is the right ventricle left ventricle right atrium left atrium and this is the tricuspid wall and sometimes you can also get a good tr good views from here to see for the tricuspid wall so these are some of the five views you take and bus when you go back to the, your room or the house today just lie down for about 20 minutes imagine the views imagine the view that in which view we are i can this wall be seen and in which view we are parallel to this so you see you see this to see this is rv inflow view this is the this is the short axis view this is the fourth chamber view and this is the subcostal view so you can get all these views pulmonary wall you can see two views i see both in short axis but in apical in apical it will be difficult for you for the time being but remember sometimes we get very good view now see This is the short axis view. This is the right atrium, left atrium, interatrial septum, tricuspid wall, our right ventricle, our VOT view, pulmonary wall, and the pulmonary artery. Now, here you see you will be the flow will be away from the baseline, and you see what is happening now. You see you are you are parallel to the flow. If I do it, see the blood pulse here. I am parallel to the flow because it's transducer. It points in this way. So mostly you can do from a short axis view, but in some cases you can do otherwise. Now aorta will tell you later on because it is series multiple views again, and and you see it is not it, aortic wall views cannot be taken from a parasternal long axis view because you are perpendicular to this. So now. Uh, What is the gradient? I told you. It, it is what is the peak and what is the mean gradient. Now, four into velocity squared is related to the blood flow. So it is four into velocity. Velocity is again four meters into four becomes peak. Mean is average of multiple gradients, and average of multiples are always much better at a peak. As I told you, suppose you suppose you you have taken a velocity. you ask the patient to run the velocity will increase suppose you have taken a velocity today you ask a patient develops a severe anemia or a thyrotoxicosis his blood flow velocity will increase so the mean gradients are more important so suppose you are asked in some situation peak is important but if you are between peak and mean say mean this also you will you will get a late frequent one that in a simple language is the distance in, in centimeter the blood travels in one stroke is the velocity time integral it is very important from a prognosis point of view will tell you so now so these are the three things you should see now how do you see them you take a your job is to get a good doppler envelope now plainly me trace this every machine has got a knob it will tell you how to trace it you taste now this is the mitral wall you see we have put the doppler the sample volume at the tip of the leaflet it is going towards the transducer above now we have you see we have traced it and we get maximum mean maximum mean and this is the vti 23 cm so so you get out to any wall you see or any structure you see when you plainly meter it you get a peak mean and you get a values 4 into velocity square and a vti velocity time integral automatically you see this is the aortic wall it is below the baseline because it is going away you trace it you get peak and mean automatically now there are values which are normal which are abnormal 
So this was the patient of aortic stenosis. And you see, we have put a CW Doppler. You see, a CW has been put, no cut, and automatically it gives the value. 4.72 meters is the peak. 4 into velocity squared gives you the mean gradient. And this is the, this is the mean. And you the VTI is about 120 centimeters. And you see, whenever you planimeter a jet, planimeter a most, most echogenic, most echogenic place thing. So this is known as a modal velocity. Maximum RBCs are concentrated here. So the most prominent of the echogenic wave is the modal velocity. So you measure here, slope here. So you see here also, this is the modal velocity and we measure at the modal velocity from, we, we don't measure from here. You, you, you trace from here to here and come back here and you automatically get it. So remember, measure the brightest portion of a Doppler, which is known as the modal velocity. And this is the brightest portion again. And never measure a post-catopic bead. You see, this is not this is this is this is not a post-catopic bead, but you see, this is a, this is something known as a will not confuse you. This is known as what is known as a, a, a Doppler. Doppler alternates, one strong, one small, one strong. Don't forget about it. Now see, so how much this in centimeter, this blood travel is the velocity time integral. Then we are called in the emergency room or CCO to assess what the patient is improving or not. We only take a VTI. Suppose it is a force. Suppose today the VTI is 25, 25 centimeters. That means this is the centimeter through the one slope the blood travel. Tomorrow it is 20. That means the patient and the patient is deteriorating. That means the force of contraction is reduced. It is coming from 25 to 20. Suppose today it is 18 or 13. Tomorrow it is 16, 17. So that means the patient is improving because now the LV is able to put send the blood to the longer distance also. So this will be also when we tell you cardiac output, then this will be shown to you. But remember that by, by plainly metering any jet, you automatically get the VTI. Now remember two things, very important. In the 2D echo, you get the best results when you are perpendicular to the, to the beam. So that is why you get a, a best and a long axis wide better. So because you see, I told you, you see you are now here you are, you are perpendicular to the 2d so you get the best 2d image if you are perpendicular while in a, in a uh, so that means the targeted tissue because it is 2d echo is only give you an anatomical information and the targeted tissues but Doppler, Doppler is only interrogating the blood. So it gives you a hemodynamic into the structure information. So the, the, it is the best is in a perpendicular, this is best in parallel. So I'll tell you, to any doubt, you remember this thing, that because 2D echo doesn't interrogate the blood, it interrogates the tissue. Doppler interrogates the blood, that is, that is the receiver, that was the a source, and this is the receiver. And if they, you get the best information, structural, hemodynamic, and perpendicular and parallel. Now, these control panels will be shown to you during the course. So you can see the Doppler gain and this, because you won't understand here, it will be shown there. Now, lastly, we come to the color flow mapping. It is a major breakthrough. Faster detection of abnormal flow, because the thing is, in a, in a Doppler beam, in a color flow, you can see the blood. So you know which way the blood is going. So you can put your Doppler parallel to it. That is one advantage. When we did not have this color flow mapping, you would struggle to get a velocity. You would take 10 to 15 minutes to get a velocity without the color going here and there to see where it is now. So it guides the Doppler beam parallel to the flow. And by universal convention, the flow toward the transducer is red and the flow away from transducer is blue. 
so remember this is a this is universal again flow towards the transducer is above the baseline that is red and the flow which is away from transducer is below the baseline it is blue so red and blue remember you remember see thing down there so the you see this is the la this is the lv this is the aorta the flow going towards the transducer is of a red color and the flow away is of the blue color and the transducer why the transducer is pointing from above downwards so you see by universal convention flow towards the transducer is red and away from the transducer is blue i think this you have yourself seen it and you can this value will tell you later on now say a normal flow is laminar a disease flow is turbulent a turbulent means a multicolor laminar is a single bright color turbulent means a multicolored also now you see this is this is a, now we have reversed the this thing bring, bring lv and la to this side you see now this is lv la this is lv it is going towards the transducer it is of a blue color and this is uniform red color sorry red this is uniform red color and hence it is a a, a laminar flow you see the same blood is going away from the transducer into the aorta is shown as a blue color and this is known as an aliasing because that you need not worry about it because the drop color flow is also based on the principle of a pulse doppler so you see it is of a blue color so this is away and going towards it now you see this and this is turbulent flow okay it is not moving the flow going away from the now you see this is mitral ball this is left ventricle this is la trans transcapital ball ri la you see the blood going towards the transducer multi color but the outer color is red because it is going towards the transducer the outer color is red but in between there is a green blue and multi colored also so this is a, a trans, uh, this is you see here it is a blue color so it is so it is because the blood is going away from the transducer it is of a red color So you can easily recognize this blood in mitral regurgitation. Blood is going from LV to LA. It is away from the transducer, hence it is blue. And because it is going towards the transducer, the outer is red also. So this is the turbulent flow. You see, this is the laminar flow, and these are the turbulent flow. Now you see, this is the aortic wall. Again, you see, the aortic wall is regurgitation. You see, this blood going towards the transducer. has got a reddish outline because indicating that it is going towards the transducer like an aortic regurgitation and this is stenosis all the multicolored also immediately tells you that this is the disease site what is the advantage of seeing suppose you have a patient that got a systolic murmur it can be because of pulmonary stenosis it can be because of vst it can be because of aortic stenosis and many causes now you put a color into the pulmonary area wall If the pulmonary artery does not show any turbulence, that the pulmonary stenosis is ruled out. Then you put it on the on the septum. Suppose it shows turbulence, that means there is VST. Or put it on the aortic wall, it shows turbulence. So wherever there is a turbulence, give you a diagnosis. That is the advantage of a color flow mapping. It tells you immediately the diagnosis. Now see, it is such a sensitive technique. Now you see, this is the short axis view again. You see, this is a blue flow because that is from the pulmonary artery going away from the transducer. But you see a very small red flow. So from the pulmonary wall, a very small red flow indicates the presence of a mild pulmonary regurgitation. So some steps, some test testing technique. Suppose you want to study the PR jet, just put a color and put a Doppler beam over there. So this is now this is difficult slide for you. Now this is the parasternal long axis view. This is mitral wall. You see, this was the case of a mitral stenosis. It showed two jets. This you can never have seen without a color flow. The jet going toward the toward the transducer is of a red color, going away from the transducer is a blue color. So two jets across the mitral wall. one going towards the transducer and one going above the transducer just for the clinical interest you can keep it so this will also be told you during your 
uh, during your live demonstration. So the summary of Doppler is it provides you blood flow information, be as parallel to the flow as possible. Now you know why we have 2D CFM or Doppler because 2D gives you a complete anatomical information. Color flow mapping tells you the direction in which the Doppler beam should be placed to be parallel flow, and then you take a Doppler. You never put a Doppler without a color flow mapping. So you see the color flow mapping. If it tells you turbulence, it is a disease flow, or in any case, the main thing is it guides you because you can see the flow, so you can put it the Doppler according to on this. And the Doppler sequence directly is usually pulse Doppler, usually pulse Doppler, and then you go for CW if there is an aliasing also, or if there is a very marked disease flow, then you can go directly to the continuous wave Doppler. But for you as a beginner, start with a pulse Doppler, keeping at the tip of the leaflets or any vessel, and then go to CW. So again, summary, pulse Doppler records low velocity flow. For velocity studies, keep sample volume at the tip of the leaflets. A continuous wave records high velocity flow, interrogate at the site of turbulence, scan all planes to get a maximum velocity because all your all your uh, reports depend upon your velocity. So go to the maximum velocity and your color flow mapping should cover all areas so to, that you can get all the velocity of flow. And these are some of the normal velocities. They can be variable. What we always tell them that you see this aortic velocity is almost a double this. Mitral or tricuspid pulmonary is almost double this. These are lower. So these are some of the, why they, why say they variable? because this is the average. So these are the few, uh, you are not concerned with hepatic and pulmonary wheel. So, so this is the end of what, any questions you want, any clarification, though I told you, you'll get much more clear idea when a live demonstration is done from our studio, but still any clarification, but please read now, if you, if you don't read it, because now the whole lecture will depend upon 2D Aquan Doppler. So they are the foundation of your course. So unless you are not clear about these two things, you can you can never proceed further. Read it. Anything which is not clear, get a clarification. There is always a clarification. And during and what when you read anything which is not clear, you are, you get a love. For example, I did not show you aliasing that will be shown there. What are the how to get a good Doppler color for that will be better will be shown at the live demonstration. But today or tomorrow, read this read this, this Doppler and then see what velocity, what is the problem you get and you get clarification. But anybody wants a clarification? Good evening, sir, Rakesh over here. Uh, Dr. Ajoy, you, you can open up your mic and ask the question. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Such a brilliant lecture. So I actually want to hear once again the slide uh, that showed the correlation between ECG and ECO. Sorry, my goodness. Yeah. Yes, sir. So I that told you that uh, the, 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 this is the normal ECG, that how very Sicily very dashing. Correct? Yes, sir. You are clear? Then we told you that the mitral wall opens in dashly. Correct? You take yes, any sir. wall, the aortic wall opens in Sicily. We have shown you numerous slides and we did this there. Now you see, you see this is. This is systole. You take the QRS complex to the T wave is systole, correct? And this is dash daily. From the T wave to the QRS dash daily, this is a P wave, correct? Yes, sir. Right. Now you take this. Mitral wall opens in dash daily, closes in systole, correct? Yes, sir. Now you see, this is systole, the dash daily starts after the T wave. If so you see the, the, the mitral wall starts opening at the dash daily after the T wave. 
Number two, it, it, it closes at Sicily and the Sicily starts at the Suarez complex and this closure goes up to the T gate. So once you know Gastelia and Sicily and the ECG, you can easily find out about this. This slide is clear or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, sure. So now you take this. Now the ventricle contracts in systole and relaxes in diastole, correct? Because yes. only when the left ventricle contracts, it pushes the blood forward or not? Yes. Eh? So yes, as sir. I told you, the, the ventricular arterial wall open in systole. So you see here. And when the and during systole, when the when the walls open, the ventricles thicken in systole. Remember, because it is now it, it is pushing the blood against the resistance, it thickens in systole. So you see, you see, this is the thickening. And this starts after at the systole or so. This is the systole. It starts from here and goes up to T wave. And you see how it thickens. This is diastole. Because see, this is diastole and how it thickens in systole. And you see this systolic thickening? The same here. So again, when the diastole starts, you can see that after this, the diastole starts. So systole, diastole. So you can now, you can see again, things are so. Now you see, uh, as I told you, the, this is below the baseline because it is going away from the transducer. Similarly, I told you the, now see this, uh, this I told you. Now see this is systole, correct? Yes. You are as to T wave and this is aortic wall. Aortic wall opens in systole or diastole? Systole. Ajay? Eh? Systole, systole. 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 You, are, you are talking in a very real way so it's diastole and this is ar i told you why it comes in diastole you can see if diastole starts so that is you can see the uh, this is a this is again you see coming in systole and diastole correct so that is how you can take even so suppose for some reason you forgot to put an ecg remember the aortic wall open is systole so this is what is systole diastole and ecg Yes, oh, so it you. applies to every any structure. I showed you the mitral wall. Here is the aortic wall. You see, it's Sicily diastole. Thank so you, sir. Ya, ki what, what is diastole? What is Sicily? Because you should have answered immediately that aortic wall opens Sicily. You are doubtful. You are you are wanting to say diastole. So my my appreciation was correct that you people have not opened any book for last five ten years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, Dr. Vikas, you can go ahead and ask the question. Thank you, sir. It's a wonderful lecture, and we will always keep learning from you, sir. Uh, it's very true that we have been out of practice. Sir, my question is uh, when we are doing a RVOT assessment of Emax, uh, especially in pulse wave doctor, if I get some aliasing, sir. So, See, I told you the aliasing can be physiological or pathological. Yes, sir. Any velocity which is beyond what is known as a Nyquist nice limit or so yes. will produce an aliasing. So now you see the flow, whether it is whether it is a turbulent or it is a laminar. Suppose it is terminal, that means it is a it is a it is a, a pathological aliasing. Suppose it is normal, but whenever there is a doubt. Suppose you whether it is an RVOT, pulmonary wall, put a CW Doppler. Okay. And that will sort out all sorts of this. If you don't see any turbulence, that is most likely is physiological, but still because you cannot record it by M mode. And the three methods will be told to you when Dr. Gupta takes your live demonstration, moving the baseline and all this. So put a CW Doppler and it will record the velocity or so. As I told you, any doubt, put a CW. Okay, sir. So if there is an analyzing, directly go for CW for all. Yes, all if, if, you see, yes, if, if you see, put a, always put a color flow because in any case you are putting a Doppler after color flow. Mm -hmm. If the color flow does not show terminal that which is there. If still the pulse Doppler shows aliasing, then the three methods which we use, which will be told to you, to, to you during study, during your play, that is 
changing the baseline, the velocity scale. If that doesn't work, then you come to see them. Sir, actually, the wrong thing which I was doing was I was not using the flow Doppler and then using the pulse curve. That is what is the learning point today. Sir. What, the point, what did you say? Dr. Gautam Bhame, please silent your mic. Otherwise, the person who is organizing this program will renew you completely. So, what I was telling to them, the, there is a physiological Doppler. So, when Dr. Gupta takes the, this thing, he will tell you, that. I told you from pulse code to CW, but he will tell you two, three methods which can cover the physiological aliasing and you may not have to use the CW. But if all methods fail, go to CW straight away, no problem. I think I am more having the problem of physiological aliasing, sir, which I have to so, tell you. Jayega, koi problem nahi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That, Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good learning. Uh, Dr. Ajay Kumar. Yes, sir. Good, uh, good evening. Sir, I want to uh, ask a uh, uh, question on that ECG eco uh, slide which you were uh, earlier answering on the first question. Uh -huh. the, uh, the middle uh, uh, volume was showing two peaks. So I want to know why it is showing two peaks Michael? in that. Uh, what did you My, say about that, that that Doppler slide that shows uh, two peaks for mitral uh, velocity? Oh, you want to see the mitral velocity? Yeah, uh, I, I just want to know but why it, uh, it was showing two peaks for that mitral uh, volume. Okay, Doppler. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> now you see. Say this will also be told to you. Say you know, you see the color flow. Now, this is the when the valve is opening, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, still the valve is opening or not? Yes, yes, valve is opening, sir. So the valve is opening. Then in the later part of diastole, they known as an atrial kick. Correct? So okay, this okay. is the this is the this is the A wave. This is the E wave, this is A wave. E wave is the early opening wave, and this is the partial closure, what you call an ear slope. In the later part of diastole C, it coincides with the P wave. This is the atrial kick. So these are the when, the when you know the waves, E wave, and this is the slope, and this is the A wave. So this is the second peak, is the atrial contraction, which comes in the later part of diastole and contributes about more than 20% of cardiac output. Okay, sir. Got it. Got it, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. And when there's a tachycardia, then sometimes these two beats can be fused. And that is the problem because unless because they have a tachycardia, the two beats can be fused and you can only see one view unless the heart rate is reduced. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Dr. Sefu Udin Azad, please go ahead. Um, thank you, sir, for a nice presentation. Sir, uh, my first question is. Uh, in uh, atrial fibrillation or uh, in multiple ventricular ectopics, there is a variation in Doppler sheet. Uh, which yeah. one in, in causing yeah. this? So, which one we always consider for management, a measurement? See, when we, when so we, we have, my you are you are trying to go to the end of the course. When we take this, when we take a mitral stenosis talk, then we'll tell you between sinus system and atrial fibrillation. When there is a, it, when there is a, as I told you, when there is a ventricular ectopics, never take a post ectopic beat or post ectopic beat is always a, a big beat. It is strong beat. I have got it, I have got a, a tracing, but I did not show you. So avoid a post ectopic beat. That is number one. Clear? So, so go on recording yes. your, your Doppler. If it is a, Pulse or serial bone recording, and wherever you get there is no post ectopic beat, it will freeze it and measure it. In atrial fibrillation, when we tell you it is very difficult, but you go on recording at some stage. Once you'll see when you go on continue recording, at one stage you will find it dies a long diastolic slope. When there is a long diastolic slope, you freeze it and measure the velocities or so. <laughs> Sir, uh, my second question is, sir, in, in case of severe MR or severe TR or severe AR. Uh, pardon, uh, pardon, pardon. Uh, in case of severe MR, TR or severe AR, where I will 
place the uh, sample volume of cardzar in tip of the leaflet or in uh, as i in told others, you when you know. they, as i told you in a severe mr er tr never use a pulse doppler your basic lecture yes. you are missing all all the disease flow the high velocity flows correct yes you have to yes, do a cw if it is severe mr you have to use a cw correct yes, otherwise sir. how can you with pulse doppler you see aliasing say you see you see this is aliasing yes. pulse doppler mr and by cw it disappears so whenever there is a pathology it is not your fault you will gradually get used to it whenever there is a disease flow always use the cw now tr pr can be physiological also there are about 70 80 90% of patient can have a normal pr and tr you can start with a pulse doppler then go to the cw but a whole high velocity flow that i told you have to be done by the c i have written here to measure high velocity flows across aortic wall regurgitative wall pa pressure all this use a cw remember this basic principle also correct thank you sir uh, dr gajanan jispal ji yes go ahead dr gajanan yes sir uh, i have one doubt about a little doctor, louder you have to speak a little louder uh, yes sir uh, sir uh, when we uh, uh, take the uh, long axis view then uh, how can we, uh, we how can we interpret the uh, uh, flow wave that is, that is the flow wave that is the, uh, towards the transducer or against the transducer as i how told can, you uh, basic remember as i told you the first slide i told you the charge dosa is always pointing above downward irrespective which view you take that is lvot view parastel long charge dosa is again pointing away downward and this is lvot so the flow is going away from the transducer correct so where is yes. it below the baseline or not is long axis view sir the same thing you are saying parastel long axis or, or yes sir yes sir yes sir parastel Yes, sir. Parastonal long axis view, sir. No, in parastonal long axis view, I told you that that you never. Now here you see. Yes, sir. Now you you are perpendicular to the flow, so you don't don't do anything. Whether it is mitral okay. wall in the aortic wall, the charge yes. is always pointing above downward. So it is perpendicular, and the perpendicular will not give you any velocity. So you do. Okay. I told you remember two dictums in which view the wall we see. Am I parallel to the flow? correct yes so once as i yes. told you once you go back to your room or your house just lie down for 30 minutes and just imagine what dr gupta has told you about the views and remember which views i am taking and what are the structures in it and then correlate it with the thank you uh, dr jasleen you can go ahead now ishwal uh, good evening sir so good when we take Uh, so when we take uh, velocities in the different views, as in case of tricuspid wall, we are taking uh, velocity in the four views. We take the average, or we take the highest velocity. No, no. Say what? Always take the view. Very good question. We showed you about five views. We showed the velocity. The view which gives you the maximum velocity, take that view. Correct. So that a view which gives you the maximum velocity is always take that view. and remember that will be told to you always take an average of three velocity if you take any velocity if you take any velocity you will see that they, they are variable also so you can answer so, uh, yeah, you see all the velocities are variable so always take three now see this is smaller so, number 1 ask the patient to breathe out hold the breath once you have say when you have taken a color flow you fix your doppler once you have fix your doppler ask the patient to breathe out and hold the breath and you take an average of 3 you see all the velocities are there and average of 3 velocities and remember your question was if you of all the views whichever view gives you the maximum velocity take it for example aortic wall when we'll tell you will we take from multiple views and whichever view gives maximum we take it Uh, yes sir and one thing more sir when we are examining the mitral wall when we have a mitral stenosis 
is the green flow that's the turbulence is the turbulence seen in the might in the atrial area or the ventricle area like we see what blood is going blood is going from atria to ventricle yes sir correct so right, the turbulence sir. and the metal wall is between atria and ventricle right so sir so the wall is narrow correct right sir so the pressure of the la will increase but because the turbulence is beyond the mitral beyond it is always beyond the wall so it is in the lv it's in the lv okay sir ah uh, because it is beyond the wall if okay, it about ar it will be it is mr it will be below the base but in a pure mitral stenosis it will be above the baseline right sir thank you so much jasleen tum kahan kaam karti ho sir i work at chandigarh are bab acha chalo good thank you sir good question anybody else would like ask question any questions they have in minds they can raise their hands hello sir kaun bol rahe hain aap i am dr mukhtar ahmed from lucknow mukhtar good evening sir good good evening sir sir uh, i want to ask one thing just uh, you told before before doing the echo we should assess the patient clinically if yes. bp is high and tachycardia so we should do the echo or postpone for tomorrow See, i would what? say that for example i'll give you an example suppose you any hypertension will affect your your findings especially okay. aortic wall any okay. tachycardia will affect your findings so we, when we come to the you just hold on when we come to the mitral stenosis we will tell you what the technique we ask the we give the patient a small dose of beta blocker and ask them to come again oh. so so during it is rapid heart rate and it uh, and bp it will always be there it will it oh. will always give a fallacious result oh okay sir ahmed aap kahan kaam karte ho lucknow mein sir i am in lucknow actually i am faculty in integral medical college in integral medical college I see, our integral medical college, sir. Integral university, yeah, उसमें medical college है. Okay. I medical joined med, I joined KG medical college in 1954. तब आप पैदा हो गए थे? Sir, मेरी 1966 ही पैदाइश है. थोड़ा look. Oh, मेरी uh, मैं 1954 में था. चलो गए. Carry on, carry on. बहुत बहुत सीन है. Sir, मैं actually मैं थोड़ा और detail बता दूँ. मैं मैं सऊदी में काम किया हूँ. मैं तीन चार साल पहले इंडिया आया था तो जॉइन कर लिया था कमिंग कम टू द नेक्स्ट एनीबॉडी एल्स वांट एनी क्वेश्चन कैन वी गो हेड विद डॉक्टर पद्मारिता पेडी जस्ट कमिंग इन अ मिनट जस्ट कमिंग डॉक्टर पद्मा गेट रेडी यू हैव टू यस सर मुक्ता कहां काम कर रही है ही इज ऑन अ वे आई एम ऑडिबल सर या यू आर परफेक्टली ऑडिबल डॉक्टर पद्मा थैंक यू सर tell me what is the question uh, good evening sir um uh, my doubts may be very basic sir sorry sir i am a gynecologist well, the doubt was also very basic for uh, you yes sir but i am a gynecologist sir so it will be even more uh, difficult for me uh, so uh, like i am used to uh, taking my uh, fetal scan sir so in that we take color gain starting from 30 the value so is it the same here in the cardiac what, or what do you what was the question the color gain starting of the color gain sir we start at 30 so is it the same See, here sir just just a minute when while when i was discussing the color gain yeah. and the, what is the what is the thing we do i told you that it will be very difficult for you to understand the 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 various thing that i told you that when the live demonstration will be shown then you will be told how how to obtain a good color flow mapping so just hold on for a for a day or two and then it will be shown to you how to do a a color flow gain because our our may be slightly different also because we normally don't work at about 30 or so because it produces a lot of turbulence also but that will be clarified when we when we show you what are the gains and what are the velocity scales also Okay, Dr. sir. Doctor Padma, Doctor Padma, Rita. Yes, sir. Start and what is color gain is Nyquist limit. Nyquist yes. Nyquist limit in obstetrics or fetal is thirty, and yes. what we have in adult is fifty to sixty. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So one more question, sir. There was a mention about plan uh, planimetry. So yes. uh, I don't know what that is, sir. So is this the, the right time to ask? The, the, the slide is in front of you. Then okay. Whenever, whenever you you trace any velocity, you get a mean, peak, and the AVI. 
say i told you two things that 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 always may slope is there and always measure the from the a, 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 a sort of a most ecogenic or the modal velocity and any any velocity you or any structure you you plane meter you you get automatically a peak velocity mean velocity peak and mean gradient and a vti but it everything anything you measure you plane meter you automatically get these three things okay sir uh, so what is the cine mode uh, how is it used here sir pardon cine mode c i n e cine mode uh, uh. how is it used here in the doppler sir no we don't do cine mode i think okay sir because we do a lot in fetal echogram so i was wondering if it is done here no no so here we we are we you we are we don't use any sort of a, a anything which you use in a fetus or so okay. don't do that what or so okay sir thank you sir thank you for the um, uh, doubts cl clarification sir thanks well, dr arun singh please go ahead now unmute yourself and go ahead Dr. Arun Singh. By the time he joins, Dr. Iqbal, you have some questions. You can ask those questions. Dr. Iqbal. Dr. Arun Singh, any questions? Sir, you want to... sir I have a question uh, regarding pulsar through continuous at Doppler. Uh, okay. We can see that pulsar Doppler has some limitation, like aerial aspect. And then in that case, we can switch to continuous wave Doppler. Your, My sir, voice is, voice is cracking. Voice is not clear. Doctor, are am I clear? Doctor Iqbal, your voice is cracking. You know. Sir, am I clear now? Yeah. Remove your mic. Speak on a laptop. That'll be better because your mic is very close to your mouth. You re lower your yeah. Just bring it down to your neck. Look. Look at me. Uh, my mic is somewhere over here, way away. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, am I slowly, yes, sir? slowly, very slowly. Better, better, slightly better. Uh, sir, my question is uh, uh, there is some limitation in pulsar Doppler. Uh, okay. In that case, we can switch to continuous wave Doppler. So, my question is uh, why don't we use continuous wave Doppler in every case? Is very fast beginning. Sir, his question so your is, question is why not take that is Doppler in every no. case? His question is there's a limitations with pulse wave Doppler. So, why not we take a continuous wave Doppler in every subject? No, because because you want to sometimes the you cannot replace a pulse wave Doppler. Suppose you want to take a LVOT velocity, you have to use a pulse. I told you the pulse wave is only meant to record a velocity at a particular site. Site specific. If you take, if you take a CW Doppler, it will record velocity all across this Doppler wave or so. So when you you cannot function without a pulse Doppler, when other indications will be told to you. Suppose I say you, I want to study the normal velocity of the mitral wall. Now you have to take a pulse Doppler. Suppose I want to do a diastolic function. All that, that are then a pulse Doppler. So the thing is that the, this cannot be replaced because it can record velocity at a particular site and not at, the, at, the, at the anywhere or so. So that is the reason that it cannot be, it cannot be done or so. Yes, is it still it. clear or not? Clear, sir. Dr. Iqbal, at your level, always start with pulse Doppler. As Prasha sir has told you, if you can't adjust the Doppler spectrum by increasing the limits of uh, the scale or moving example, the baseline, suppose, then only you shift it. To suppose current. you want to have an LVOT velocity, only LVOT velocity. So you have to, will you yes. use a pulse Doppler or a CW? Pulse Doppler. Hey? Pulse because you want only CW, pulse Doppler. A CW will record all over the lines. So that means the suppose you want to record a LVOT, you have to use the pulse Doppler. So you pulse Doppler cannot be replaced because it is the it is the backbone of 
of recording any at a particular site. Well, thank you, sir. Got it. Okay, Dr. Walihul Islam, please go ahead. Thank you, sir, very much uh, for uh, a nice presentation elaboratively and very palliative to us as well. Uh, my question is that uh, in sometimes while we are doing continuous uh, web Doppler, then uh, we did not find a CFM nicely, but we get the Doppler. So whenever we are, we are measuring the continuous uh, CW measurements of velocity yeah. of any of the pulp, so in, we are not getting the CFM. Color flow mapping was not good, but we are getting uh, the velocity of the See, I That is what we do sometimes. See, I have in, when, when I was taking a lecture of hemodynamics, I showed some cases where the color flow mapping was very bad. Maybe because of obesity and many other things. So sometimes what I do, is put blindly a CW Doppler. Okay. Suppose I see a tricuspid wall opening and closing, yeah. and I can't see a color in all the views, five views or so. So I put a CW Doppler at the multi-material wall and sometimes the quality velocity, and I have been successful in some cases. Okay. So if the, the color is definitely there to guide you about the Doppler, but there are certain limitations when you can't see a Doppler, or you can go to other views. If other views, we will we will not we will not confuse you with other views. There are other views which can which is known as a sort of a special RV view, inflow view RV views that okay. that can show you the color flow mapping or so. So if suppose any way you cannot see a color flow, put a blind Doppler. Always correlate with clinical findings or so. Okay. Don't Suppose that the patient has got a flattening of the septum, RV, RA, enlargement, other things. So, so then you then you correlate with other things. That was the clinical correlation is important. And another question is, sir, uh, during bradycardia, uh, is having any impacts of uh, measuring the velocity? Yes, as I told you, any tachycardia will increase the velocity, the especially the peak velocity. As I told you, that suppose you take a peak velocity. And suppose next day the patient gets a severe anemia. The peak, the peak velocity depends upon the amount of flow across that particular wall. And that amount of flow will be depending on the exercise, anemia, thyroid, osteoporosis. And that is why I said that the mean is more, more better in that case. But suppose you take a swart studying a pulmonary stenosis, where you take only the peak velocity or so. So definitely the, the tachycardia, any tachycardia, probably above the rate of 100 will always interfere with our recordings or so. So it is on individual case. You cannot give a brand opinion to your individual case that yes, if you ask one thing, take a cardiac rectum will definitely help in, uh, in is, a, is a limiting factor or so. For example, we do a diastolic function. They say, take, you are, we always right. If the patient is not willing to come next day, we is always right that because of tachycardia, we comment on the diastolic function cannot be fully made. Thank you. Always they are, they are definitely a limiting factor. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Ahmad. But Hark if the patient can wait, they sometimes give a dose of 25 milligram of beta blocker or some something and then see. Yeah. Dr. Ahmad Huck. Yes, yeah, sir. Good evening, sir. Sir, I am Dr. Mamun from NICVD Bangladesh. Yeah. So, sir, my question is uh, in HOCM, uh, sometimes we, uh, when measure the LV, LVOT gradient, it is so high in PWO that it causes aliasing. Then what to do? Did I tell you that any disease flow, you have to put CW Doppler? Okay. So who told you to put a pulse Doppler in Hocum? No, sir. I, 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 was, I was wondering that in HOCM, I have to, I have to precisely measure the LVOT gradient. So, yeah, so yeah. what you can suppose, suppose you now what I do and you what you want to now suppose now suppose you have put a pulse doctor here. Suppose always remember from a practical point of view, whenever you get a hokum case, always rule out a subaortic membrane, number one. A subaortic membrane, suppose you 
and the pulse doppler will not give you any information you put a self pulse doppler here then then you cannot get any information now suppose the aortic valve is not thickened aortic valve is fully opening that means it is not an aortic stenosis then sometimes what i do is go to the right parasternal window see the aortic valve velocity so you put a cw doppler don't put a pulse doppler also now whenever you take a hokum case always see at the mid lv level also now there may be there can be both a, a, a mid lv and the lvot obstruction so you 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 see by the pulse doppler issue but ultimately you have to come by because any any value more than 30 is indicate is indicative of a, a significant gradient across the in the home hokum 30 is the limit also so you have to use a, a, this thing so when the, when you are giving a live demonstration they will be told don't get confused everybody confused get confused even up to the fourth and fifth day of the conference that yes pulse and cw so we have repeatedly told you when to use pulse and when to use cw so if you are getting a hokum case you have to use ultimately cw okay thank you sir thank you for uh, the clarification can i add sir uh, dr ahmed the difference in continuous wave doppler at uh how come would be you will see inverted key slope shape pattern the dagger shape though yeah dagger shape or key slope key slope shape pattern where is in you have to keep a pulse wave doppler since you will not be able to contain the doppler spectrum you will have to move on to continuous wave doppler as Pra dr prashar sir has told you so and that, that is case, the, rapid, rapidly said that in your text you know that is a sort of a Early systolic, later pan systolic, but in these cases it is a dagger shape late systolic. So that will help you identify the gradient across that area. And remember one thing: we get many cases in which they there by mistake put an put a CW on the MR. So you see that MR is above. Make your color Doppler window so small that you are only interrogating the LA, uh, the LUOT, not the MR. Otherwise, you will get a very high velocity. So they are there. You have to tell them. Don't worry about it. Okay, sir. Thank you. What Thank do you, you want, uh, Doctor Rahul Bansode? Uh, good evening, sir. Sir, thank you. Uh, thank you for your very nice and uh, very basic lecture for us, sir. So, my basic question is uh, regarding pulse wave. So, uh, uh, what should be the ideal gate size uh, for pulse wave? No, that depends upon variable. It should be three to five millimeters or so. It should yes, not sir. be very large. The more large it is, it will cover a wider area. So about three yes. to five millimeters is the size of the of the pulse mode or so. Yes. So that yes. if it neither is too small, neither is too large. So you, know, you want okay. to see at a specific site or so. Uh, yes, sir. yes, sir. And sir, one more uh, for CW. Uh, what should be the location? Uh, like for, uh, you have told uh, for uh, pulse wave okay. that uh, it should be at the tip of the leaflets. So the location for, uh, will be yeah. at the area of the turbulence. Area of the in turbulence. The color color, color when you see the turbulence, yes, and sir. then you are as parallel to the flow. That is the that is the thing. In a, the, you have to see this turbulence. Suppose you are seeing a, a turbulence in the pulmonary ball. Go to the short yes. axis. Put a CW parallel to the flow. Yes. So wherever yes, you see the turbulence. Yes. Whether it yes, is sir. VSD, whether it anything, you can put it also. Yes. At the level of the at the side of the turbulence. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for clearing. Uh, Doctor Pankaj. Uh, sir, good evening. Uh, it's a very Hi. basic question. Uh, I get difficulty in recognizing the jet direction by color Doppler flow mapping. So, how to go about it? Is there any? I mean, I know that uh, during mitral stenosis, yeah. and the Jet will be on or towards the positive side above the baseline, and towards uh -huh. regurgitation it will be in the negative side. But in yeah. case of aortic regurgitation, becomes the regurgitant flow will be towards the positive side and uh -huh. the vice versa. Yeah. And again, in case of tricuspid regurgitation, again it will be exactly the same that I mean as it was in, below the below the baseline. Baseline, yeah. 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 So this. Uh, Uh, I mean, for both mitral and tricuspid, it goes the same. But in case of aortic regurgitation, it will be opposite side. 
say the basic thing I told you. Just remember, flow towards transducer is positive against negative. That's all. In an aortic regurgitation, blood is coming from aorta to LV, correct? And yeah. this is the LV. What I am showing in that you see, this is the LV. This is the aorta, correct? Can you hear? See this? Yes, sir. In yeah. the aortic regurgitation, the blood will come from aorta to LV. So it is going towards the transducer. So it will be a it is a, it will be a positive Doppler shift, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the mitral degradation, the blood is going away from the transducer will have a negative thing. Same with transcuspid regurgitation will be against the baseline. So anything basic principle remember, and that will take you a few days when you really read it or so. Towards transducer positive, against transducer negative. Whether it is a color, whether it's a Doppler or anything. Thank you. Well, you have to detail me for now. topic. Yeah. Have you got any any book to read? In local Rakesh, we have material. Mila, for now, only is it not? Sir, we have sent. We have sent the book. We have sent the book already, sir. So, you to read it. So, and then clear your doubt before your next live demonstration from the studio. Anybody uh, else? Doctor Kaji Muhammad Rubayat. Sir, thank you, sir, for your nice and elaborative uh, presentation, sir. Sir, my question is, uh, according to the fluid dynamics, sir, the central part shows the highest velocity. So should we put, should we put the uh, uh, sample volume in the central part, just parallel to the central part? Or no, see, I said, when you are checking the volume, then you put it at the annulus level. But when you are, it's in the central, it, it dep doesn't depend, sir. The central velocity is all right. Now, remember that when we say the prosthetic wall, we always take the side jets or so. But when you are taking a pulse Doppler, it is always put at the tip of the leaflets or so. And then, because we are not taking the volumetric assignment or so. So what was your real question? Sir, my question is, should we put uh, uh, at, the, at the just center part of the uh, uh, major measurement that uh, should we put that oh, like what i told you that it is something believe that when you take a volumetric measurement then you put at the endless level but if you take the velocity you put at the tip of the leaflets okay sir sir another thing is that sir whenever a patient with tachycardia or bradycardia sir is there if if if, if it is uh, if you have to do uh, the measurement in on the sports side you need to do the measurement then any Anything that uh, uh, mitigate this problem, like uh, to measure these issues in both cases, sir. Like so you are meant to say 2D echo, 2D echo, or Doppler echo. Doppler, sir. So, so when there is a bradycardia, is no problem. When there is tachycardia, you can expect a slightly increased velocity. That's all. Okay, in a sir. bradycardia, also the next beat can be a stronger beat also. So that doesn't matter. That you I said the. As long as it is willing the at as long as it is within the limits or so, it doesn't matter. Suppose it is one or maybe one point two zero, it doesn't matter much. So definitely take a cardio may you can get slightly increased velocity, but that is the that is expected in both cases. Sir, sometimes in sir, sir, sir sometimes uh, in complete heart blocks, sir, there is some uh, uh, one bit is stronger bit is there. So yeah. at so that time. So what we do in a complete heart block, yes. so when you see multiple beats, we always take an average of multiple beats or so. Don't go because some beat will be strong. For example, after a block, the next beat will be high or so. Yes. Sir. So in those cases, you the, the velocity, remember one thing that in velocities, doesn't matter that much if there is a complete heart block. But again, you can always mention that is that the velocity is very variable because of this. Then you take an average, give the minimum and maximum. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. For in a nice. TR, remember, in a TR velocity, always take in a phase when there is a breather. Breathing, that I tell you, when the pulmonary hypertension will be told, they will tell you that in which phase of respiration you should take it, TR velocity. Thank, thank you, sir, for your nice always presentation. Always ask the patient to hold breath or so in some, in some situations. Dr. Shubra, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Thank you, sir, for the nice presentation. I've got a question that you said that we should keep always the Doppler to the parallel to the flow. 
And in some cases, they say, for example, uh, eccentric MR or AR, we feel very difficult to make the uh, make it perpendicular. So what can be done in those situations? In those cases, if for an MR, I don't think that there'll be any problem. But in any case, when you are seeing by the color flow mapping, so, and then you are seeing the MR. So you, when you say you are trying to calculate the velocity of the MR, correct? Say what happened that, 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 that I got some cases in which the MR was of a low velocity when there was LV dysfunction. Your question was that suppose you are interrogating any check and you are, despite all efforts and all views, you are not able to be as parallel to the flow. So you okay, write sir. in your report that despite all efforts, take multiple views, you are not able to parallel. Hence, the, the velocity values may be slightly variable. That's all. I said, always be very, very honest in giving a reply. Always say that if you are not able to collect it, but I'm told, but I see if you take various views and you try something, you will be always be trying to be parallel to the flow. But suppose for the sake of a theoretical discussion, you are not able to be, then right there that the value can be slightly variable. For example, whenever we do an echo, in the end, I always write the, the various hemodynamic values could be variable due to atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, then all, if you see many of the research in the research in the international media, they exclude all yeah. cases of atrial fibrillation. I always write in my report that the various, various hemodynamic parameters could be variable because of atrial fibrillation. You take mitral stenosis, some area will be 1.8, some will be a 1.2, some will be 1.2. So you always give a very, Honest report also. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor, Dr. Ajay, you have two questions. Please come up and ask your questions. The first question from Dr. Ajay. Are you there, Dr. Ajay? Yes, sir. Go ahead, Ajay. Sir, I asked, uh, is there any difference between and Doppler effect and Doppler shift? No, no, I think it is a good question. They are, they are just depending upon the, when the Doppler beam comes in a certain frequency and they are going with a different, they go with a different frequency because depending upon the movement of the structure or so. But for all your all practical problems, you think it is, it is not going to matter much in your clinical work or so, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. In Kalva, you have to be parallel to the flow. That's all. Uh, Dr. Gajanan? Sir, what is the tissue Doppler? We'll touch that topic later on, not at this present oh, moment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Padmanita again. Hello, sir. Yes. Um, Doppler velocity is to be measured at the tip of the valve, sir. So yeah. in mitral, is it uh, anterior or posterior or any, what do we do, sir? So the, if, you see, if you see this mitral wall, correct? Yes. The mitral wall is opening. Yes. Correct? Yes. You have to put a septal volume here, not in the LA. The mitral wall is opening towards the LV. Because okay. remember, the, the LA has to fill the LV. If yes. If the LA doesn't fill the LV, how can the person be alive? So when, the, when it fills the LV, the, the mitral wall will open. And so that means it will open always toward the LV side. Okay. Correct? You see the aortic wall is always open toward the aortic side. So you yes. have to measure it not at the atrial side, but at the ventricular side. Uh, yes, sir. But which leaflet? No, both. You can both. see both the leaflets. Na. Yes. You can, see, you can see both leaflets and you can put the Doppler beam here. Because this in a normal case doesn't matter. But suppose in mitral stenosis where the PML is fixed, you just put it on the on the on the turbulent area. But here you put, you can see the both are both are opening. You just put at the tip of the leaf stress. That's all. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I got it now, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Any other question from anybody before we close down the session? But I I'm would sure. say that please, please read today. So if something is in your mind and then get it clarified also. Otherwise, they will know whatever your questions are there. You should keep your questions 
when a live demonstration is being made, then your clarification will be there. Definitely, sir. All right, sir. I think there's time to say uh, good night, Shabba Khair, stay safe, and see you next week, same time sure. at 8 o'clock. And any questions still you want to ask, just put on a WhatsApp. Dr. Parashastar is on a WhatsApp. We'll reply you whenever you get any time. Thank you, sir. I think okay. we have the time to close it down. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. We have to thank Divya for getting a different place. Right, sir. Your, thank you, Divya. Your email. Your God email bless you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.